Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video in the series of machine learning with Scikit-learn. And in today's video we will be looking at a very important concept of the error handling that is known as a gradient descent. So in this video we will be learning about what is gradient descent, why it's so important and the concept behind it followed by one of the examples of implementation of the same. So let's get started. So in the machine learning concept there is always a way to always evaluate your model. Now that can be done using various ways but the main one of the main ways remains the same that is by calculating the error in your predictions. Now as your error rate reduces by every time your models get predict gets to predict better and better each time when you're performing a specific task. Now the image that you have in front of you is a three dimensional image of a gradient descent. What that specifically means is the one which you are having as the global minima is the point where you are having the minimum error. Now your machine learning model can have any of the error value starting from any point and the objective that you have in your machine learning model is to get to that minimum error. Now to handle the same your machine learning model can take various paths to it. For example if you are having a specific position at this location you could be working like this. If you are having a specific position from here you might be coming at a different rate like this. But the only objective that we do have is to get the global minima. That concept is known as the gradient descent. It is a simplified image of the gradient descent in two dimensions. Now, what we can do understand is that we could be starting from any rate or any location. Now, the two major approaches that can happen to attain that global minima is in two ways there are two specific situations that one in which you can take a very big leap or very big rate or very big step to reach the global minima or the one that you can take on a very small steps to reach the same now the problem is if you start with a very big step the problem is that you might not go to the minimum one because of the steps that you're taking allows you to end up on a very big steps and you know increasing it on a negative side the problem with having with a very small rate is that the rates get smaller and smaller each and every time and as it gets to the global minima it increases on an infinitely many small steps allowing you to never reach the global minimum. So to handle that we use something known as stochastic gradient descent in which you need to take a very specific further step in according to the model that you're working with allows you to reach global minima in a very best rate. As you can see this is the place from where we start and this is the location through which we want to reach in our machine learning model. So let's see one of the examples of how we can implement this in our model and yes let's move forward. Now as we can see we have the concept of k4 clustering, k4 validation and uh, we can see the code available for that from a banking data. Now, as we can see from sklearn dot cross validation, we are importing the k fold and passing 
the number of folds followed by the number of iterations and shuffling equals to false. Now, what we do here is that we save each and every amount of step data for the computer to validate it, its training or testing period. And what happens with that is that every time the data is being saved and not seen by the machine learning model, it allows it to evaluate it properly. Now, what we see after completing it, we see that this is the training data we have. And this is the testing observations that we got over the iterating for k fold over a time. And we can see that the data set contains 25 observations now and 5 fold for 5 observation. Now, Observation in the testing set is exactly one for each of the instance that is available for the same. Now when we test the cross validation again for a k nearest neighbor sampling, we can see the accuracy model. And in the first iteration, we get an accuracy of 100% followed by the 90, 93% and so on. So that was the concept of k-fold and the essentials of gradient descent. We can always look at the documentation for the same in sklearn model selection and k-fold. The library is being updated now and you still get all of the examples and the testing and training data set for the same. Okay. Thank you.